Look, maybe you're a fight fan like me, or maybe you're just getting ready for that next big game day, or maybe you're just another hungry person on YouTube. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because all I'm here to do is inspire you and leave you with some amazing ideas so your next game day or fight night is the most tasty yet. Now let's go. Okay, my friends, we are starting with the chicken wings, and all I've done with these is let them sit in buttermilk for about 24 hours. And if you want, you could add some spices. Sometimes I add franks or pickle juice to this, but today I just wanted that tenderizing effect from the buttermilk. And I'm just gonna start by straining these off and we really wanna get as much moisture off of these as we can. I gave them a little rinse and no, I'm not washing the chicken. We just need to get that buttermilk off. It's done its job. I'll then simply just dump them out onto a wire rack and let them sit for about 30, 45 minutes just to dry out even that little bit more. While that's happening, let's make my homemade ranch. A lot of you have already tried this. I will post this recipe down in the description. We're starting with a combination of mayonnaise, sour cream, and buttermilk. Then I'm taking a little bit of onion powder as well as garlic powder. I'll grind that finely with a mortar and pestle and the reason I do this is I don't want to end up with a grainy ranch Take a little white wine vinegar and if you are still on that anti MSG campaign That's okay I just urge you to do a little research for yourself and see where that all stemmed from I personally love it and use it all the time everything in moderation Okay, I'll add the MSG to the vinegar followed by a little bit of sugar Give that a little stir let it sit for 10 minutes and then add it to your mayo mixture I'll then add some fresh chopped herbs I like to do a mix of parsley chives and dill add a nice little pinch of salt and then simply just whip whisk to combine and boom, your ranch is done. The only thing I like to do with it now is just let it sit in the fridge for an hour where it will continue to thicken up. Okay, back to the wings. I'm gonna take a paper towel and dry these off as much as I can, flipping and doing that on both sides. Next up, my homemade barbecue rub. I'll post a recipe for that down in the description if you wanna try it out. I'll add that to a little spice shaker and then douse my wings evenly on both sides. I love doing my wings on the smoker and I'll do these at 350 Fahrenheit for about 40 minutes. I also just flip them over halfway through cooking, so after about 20 minutes. And while those wings cook, let's make the buffalo sauce. I'm starting with Frank's here. And Sergeant Gilbert reporting for duty. That's just black pepper and I keep this sauce really simple. A little garlic powder, a little bit of honey. All we need to do now is whisk in some cold unsalted butter. In French, that's butter. And when doing this, just keep the heat low and whisk it in in small batches. When your first batch of butter is all mixed in, just follow up with the rest. Something nice you can do for your guests is to keep half the wings dry and half the wings wet. I know, for instance, that my wife usually prefers the dry wings. So I'll just sauce up half and give them a nice toss. And today I figured since we have so many heavy food items, we're gonna need something fresh on this platter so nobody dies. So I'm just gonna be making some guacamole, starting by dicing up some white onion. I'll slice one jalapeno all the way around and then dice that into little tiny cubes. A couple Roma tomatoes and here I just quarter them and then take out that fleshy interior, which you can save for salads. And then again, just dice that into little tiny cubes. I'll half a couple of limes and then get the avocados ready. If you don't wanna use your knife to get out the avocado pits, hold it like this, thumb on the back and you just push. Works every time. Scoop out your avocado meat and I'll add that to my mulca hete and I'll hit it with that lime juice right away so I just don't get any browning. Salt goes in next followed by a tiny little bit of olive oil and a whole bunch of garlic. I'll give this a preliminary mashing and then add all my ingredients that I just diced up. The last item we need to add today is cilantro and if this tastes like soap to you it just means your body can detect the aldehydes present in it. If that's the case you can just leave it out and when I make guacamole I love to leave it a little bit chunky. I do not want a smooth paste here. I'll throw two avocado pits back into the guacamole. This really does help to keep it green. The last thing I'm gonna do, and you don't need to do this, but I'm gonna make my own homemade chips. It really does make a big difference in guacamole for me. So 350 degrees Fahrenheit for just about four or five minutes and hit them with salt right away when they come out of that fryer. Let's talk about the dipping sauce. You know, if I was gonna make all my own sauces, this video would be like 40 minutes long. So I made my own ranch. I bought some local barbecue sauces from Franklin's Barbecue here in Austin, very famous smokehouse. I have some chipotle, some ketchup. I'm gonna mix the two of these to make a little chipotle ketchup and then I have some tomato sauce and let me explain something to you about this. Yes, you can make it yourself and yes, it's really good, but I always just like to read the ingredients and see how close to the real deal it is. And look at this, tomatoes, basil, garlic, olive oil, parsley, and nothing else. That sounds like basically what you use to make tomato sauce and not only that, it's been sitting in this jar for a while picking up flavor, so I have no problem using good store-bought tomato sauce. If you wanna go all out, I have a chipotle barbecue sauce recipe I will post down in the description. I also have a recipe for blue cheese dressing, I'll also post that
that in the description if you want to make that as well. For the chipotle ketchup, I'm going 80% ketchup and about 20% chipotle. That seems to be a nice blend for me where you get a little bit of spice, but it's not overpowering. Okay, now let's make the dreaded breading station. And for American food, I always just go with all-purpose flour, garlic powder, onion powder, and salt. That just seems to be the magical combo for most American food items. Two whole eggs, wow, that almost worked. Just give them a whisk. And finally, panko breadcrumbs. And here, I'm gonna blend them up. You'll see why in a minute. And stripping some fresh thyme into the breadcrumbs is always a good idea. The way it crackles and pops and scents your food is really incredible. I'm just using some cheap store-bought mozzarella sticks for this, and you just dip them in the flour, shake off a little excess, roll them in the eggs, and finally coat them in the breadcrumbs. And because mozzarella sticks are famous for exploding in the fryer, what I do is roll them back in the egg and then coat them again in the breadcrumbs. Then just fry them at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for one minute. If you do it any longer, they will explode on you. And by explode, I mean all the cheese will exit the shell and you'll be left with a dry little hollow piece of sadness. I'll just hit these with a little bit of fresh Malden salt at the end and then wow, look at that cheese pool, my friends. Dip them in a little bit of your hot tomato sauce and you have a little treat to remember. Next up, onion rings, because I mean, why not, right? We're doing the feast, let's do it. All-purpose flour, baking powder, salt, cornstarch. Give your dry ingredients a whisk and then make a little well in the middle of the flour. Add in your water, followed by one egg. And now simply whisk that until smooth, cover with saran wrap and leave in the fridge for one hour to rest. I'll give you the option if you don't want to take this extra step, you can use the panko breading station for your onion rings as well. Take your tops and your tails off the onion and peel it whole. Cut into big half inch rings, then coat them in the same flour you use for your mozzarella sticks before dropping them into your batter. Let a little bit of that excess batter drip off and then fry them at 350 for five minutes, flipping them halfway through the process. Drain them off on some paper towel and immediately hit them with salt. The result is a light and crispy onion ring to remember. These look really good. This batter is freaking amazing and you must try it. This is the one I used for my fish and chip. Wow. Now, am I a big fan of Arby's? I have honestly never even eaten at Arby's, but do I sometimes buy their frozen french fries? Their seasoned curlies? Yes, I do and I'm not ashamed to say it. But if you want a video on how to make proper french fries, I'll put it in the corner. It only takes three days. I'll fry these at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about six or seven minutes. And there you have it, my sweet friends. Your feast is done. And if you're gonna make this at home, I would recommend doing one item at a time so you can keep everything fresh and hot. The last thing I need to do today is give this all a quick taste and go all full-blown UFC on my fridge. Well, oh my God, this is pretty insane. I don't know where to begin. I guess I'll have a chip. I'm a little overwhelmed. Mm, great guac. I'm having an Arby's fry in the ranch. Oh, oh, here we go. Flats are better. Right there, meat and umbrella. Here we go. Mm, oh, those wings are good. Go for an onion ring and the chipotle ketchup. The chipotle ketchup was really good. Mock stick, marinara. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know I love you in a matter.